Chapter 1 The old man slouching on the concrete bench at Brea Mall seemed ordinary enough, with short gray hair, wrinkled face scrunched into a smile, dirty sneakers, brown pants, and a white t-shirt. But he wasn't breathing. Jessica Snow was sure of it. His t-shirt was skin-tight to his chest, and it was as still as death. His eyes stared into emptiness, unblinking. He looked like her father, two years ago, when he was in a coffin. She reached for her mother's hand and tugged. Mom stopped sipping from the drinking fountain. What is it, honey? When Jessica turned back to the concrete bench, the old man was gone. He couldn't have just walked off. She looked around. The mall swarmed with Mother's Day shoppers, talking, shouting, whacking the ground with their feet. She could have been mistaken. He could have been simply holding his breath, maybe meditating like her mother did on weeknights after work, but with his eyes open. Mom squatted in front of Jessica. You look like you saw a ghost or something. Jessica peeped past her mother. He was a short man, and many people were walking about. He could have easily slipped behind someone and disappeared. It's nothing, she said, smiling as best as she could. Mom gently pinched Jessica's nose. Silly girl. She got on her tippy toes and slurped the chilled fountain water, making her teeth hurt. As they continued walking through the mall, her hand in her mother's, she rolled her tongue around, trying to warm her teeth. Usually Jessica made gifts for her mother on this special day, such as pictures, paintings, or cupcakes. This time she wanted to do something different. This time she wanted to buy a present like adults do. She was seven years, eight months, and four days old, but she still wasn't old enough to drive. Since she knew no one who could drive but Mom, she had to bring her along shopping. Although the present wouldn't be a surprise, the thought was what counted. Well, that's what her mother told her anyways. Jessica's thought was lovely, a shiny black vase spouting with red, white, and yellow roses. So far, though, they had only passed clothing, book, music, jewelry, and candy stores. No flower shops. Mom smiled and squeezed Jessica's hand. You really don't have to do this. I want to... Ring, ring. Mother dug inside her purse and pulled out her cell phone. I'll have to return this call. It was probably someone from work. She worked extra hours so that they could have enough food and keep the home they had always lived in. Somehow she also found time to spend with Jessica, playing cards and board games, talking about school, and watching Jessica paint. She was a good mom and really loved her daughter. A heart of gold, Jessica thought. Hurrying past so many people, she wished a kind, rich man would see how wonderful mom was, how much she cared, and marry her. How could any sensible man not? Jessica let out a deep sigh. Dad had known mom's good qualities. Why was it so hard for other men to notice? She had beautiful long brown hair, which Jessica loved to brush. Dad had always told Mom. She had a gorgeous body. She was always loving and independent. What was wrong with men? Why couldn't they see this amazing woman passing them by? Jessica held her mother's hand tighter. And as they walked to a quieter place, she scowled at the stupid man passing. They stopped by the hallway, which led to the restrooms. 
It'll just be a minute, honey. Mom released Jessica's hand and began pushing buttons on her cell phone. Adults rushed by, tall, short, fat, skinny, some pushing babies, some pulling kids, stirring the air. Most seemed to know where they were going and appeared confident. Jessica liked that. She couldn't wait until she was older and could be focused on goals and jobs and important things. As her mother turned into the hallway, shielding herself from mall noises, Jessica began looking around. Three stores up, she spotted flowers in a display case. She hadn't told her mother of the present. It could still be a surprise. Sinking her hand into her skirt pocket, she touched the fifteen wrinkled one-dollar bills she had saved from weekly allowances the past two months. Her fingers tingled. That was the most money she had ever saved. She could buy the flowers herself, have them wrapped, and return before Mom was off the phone. She really wanted the present to be a surprise, and Mom always took at least ten minutes on phone calls from the office. Jessica would also be saving her busy mother time by buying it herself. The store was only three shops away. She reached into her mother's purse and took out a pen and a pad. She wrote, Be right back. Going to get present. After tearing the paper off and putting the pad back, she folded the message and snuck it through mother's arms into her hand. Mom took it and the pen and started writing. Probably something important from the call. This was a good sign. Whenever Mom wrote stuff, the conversation lasts longer. Dodging and squeezing through a rolling forest of people, head smacked by branches of handbags and jacket tails, she wasn't able to see the shop or her mother. When she finally broke through to the other side, she stood beside a knife store, not the flower shop. Long blades of steel glistened through the window, stabbing her eyes. A man's reflection appeared behind her, motionless against the colorful smudge of passing people. She turned around too quickly and almost fell into his dark blue suit. His chin sliced down at her. His smile twitched like a severed lizard's tail. Dirty iced eyes opened wide. Although the indoor mall had been warm earlier, the air was strangely cold now. He gazed into the window, smile growing up his pale cheeks. His eyes reflected white from the steel blades in the shop. Then, as though cut, they became blood red. She blinked. His eyes churned with deeper shades. Eyes couldn't do that. No one's eyes she had ever seen before were red. It must be a trick of light from the window or something. Stepping around him, still looking up, she saw his eyes turn back to cold gray. A trick of light, that's all. She saw the flower shop next door. Deciding not to waste more time, or maybe just wanting to get far away from the strange man, she ran. This made her feel faint and breathe hard. What was going on? She could run a whole lap around the school playground and not tire. Why was she spent from running just ten feet here? She got on her tiptoes, trying to find her mother over the crowd. She could not. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. She thought about going back. But she had already come this far. She might as well go inside. After catching her breath by the entrance, she was ready to pick the first set of flowers she found, whether they be roses, carnations, or whatever. Inside stood large wooden desks, large glass tables, big stuffy chairs, and tall wooden cabinets, but nothing for Mom. Certainly nothing. 
there that could possibly be something wrapped and carried away by herself. Stepping back outside the doorway, she peered through the glass and saw the flowers in the display cabinet. Why did they do that? She came all the way here for flowers, but they only had ugly furniture. She sighed and found herself keeping lookout for the man in the dark blue suit. He was gone. She didn't see any more dead old men walking around either. Good. She laughed, feeling foolish for being so cautious. Too many people were around for anything bad to happen. Besides, Mom was close by. May I help you? Jessica jumped and her head snapped up. Black beads tinkled from the store clerk's neck. Perfume thickened the air. Jessica felt like coughing or gasping, but didn't want to offend the clerk. She pointed to the window. These flowers are pretty. Yes, they are. Jessica reached into her pocket for the dollar bills. I would like to buy some. I'm sorry, they aren't for sale. The clerk straightened. Jessica breathed a deep draft of fresh air. Her neck hurt, and cranking it back to see this tall woman did not help any. The clerk said, They're just adornment. A door mint? Decoration. Oh. Her voice dropped so low she found herself looking for it on the floor. Now Mom wouldn't be surprised. She would have to help Jessica find flowers after all. Thank you, she told the clerk and walked back into the crowd. Sometimes being seven was too much. People brushed her sides as though she weren't even there. She felt awful as people passed in front, behind, and around her, not offering her a hand or a kind glance. Her knees grew weaker and she became afraid of falling down and being stomped to death. Hollowness grew inside her, each person taking away something inside her. Suddenly, she felt she had to get back to her mother.